Friends, would you pray with me this morning? Oh God, may the words of my mouth, Lord, may the meditation in all of our hearts this day be pleasing, Lord. Be acceptable unto you. Speak, O oh Lord, for your servants are listening. We pray these things through Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. You may be seated. Friends, as you know, this morning we're going to have a time of anointing with oil and praying for healing for all who desire it. And healing is a huge topic, and uh, we certainly won't cover all of it this morning. You can be glad of that, right? I won't keep you all day, but I do want us to take a few minutes to dig deeper into the scriptures, and specifically into one of my favorite healing stories from Luke's Gospel. On the surface, this woman that Meredith just read to us about, her story seems straightforward and simple. But if we dig just slightly under the surface, there's so much happening for her as Jesus heals her. She's had hemorrhages for 12 years. Just imagine for a moment yourself in her situation. For some of you, it may be easy to identify with because you too have suffered from sickness or disease for a long period of time. And no one may know or everyone may know. Luke tells us that she had spent all that she had. She had used up all of her resources and no one could help her. Along with her money, her hope and her courage are gone too. In the course of 12 years, I can imagine that she has rallied herself numerous of times to go out and seek help again and again and again but each time when they couldn't help, the disappointment, the despair sets in a little bit deeper and it gets harder to rally yourself the next time because you're sitting in that disappointment and despair. She's no longer Catherine or Janelle or whatever her name was. Rather, she has become her condition. She's only identified here as the woman who has been bleeding for 12 years. And there would have been so much shame for her to deal with, too. As a woman bleeding, likely from some issue of menstruation, she was considered unclean. She would have been shunned. No one would have been going to her house for dinner or associating with her in any way for risk of considering or being considered unclean themselves. Imagine the impact on her mental health just for a moment. The loneliness, the fear, the shame. Despite all of that, she's rallied herself one more time in today's account. Whatever faith she has, she puts in Jesus based, I think, on what she's heard about him. If I can just touch his clothes, not even his hands, not even his feet. I don't even need to touch his body. I just need to touch his clothes. I'll be made well. And then she does it. She gets close enough to touch just the fringe on his robe. And at that moment, the scripture says her bleeding stopped. And Jesus knew someone had touched him and healing had gone out from him. So he asks, who touched me? The disciples capture well what would have been going through my mind in that moment um, Jesus, you do see the crowd around you, right? Like, what do you mean who touched you? They didn't know what Jesus and the woman knew. Jesus begins to look around to see who has touched him. And as he does, the woman comes forward in fear and trembling. You can imagine the rush of emotions that must have been happening for her as she's processing what has just happened. She never expected he would stop or that he would know that she had actually reached out to touch his grobe. This wasn't a ploy to draw attention to herself. But when he stops and she comes forward and tells him what she's done, Jesus speaks these words. Daughter, your faith has made you well. Go in peace. 
In those few words, Jesus has said so much. She's no longer the bleeding, unclean woman who is at her wit's end. She's no longer hopeless, destitute, and in a place of despair. She's no longer unclean. Shame is no longer her burden to bear. She has been healed. Friends, this is what Jesus does. This is who our God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit are. In this, Jesus has redefined her identity, daughter. He has replaced her shame with peace. Instead of being like all the other times that she reached out for help and none could help her, Jesus has healed, restored, and saved her. He's brought her in, friends. She's no longer out this is a tender and beautiful picture of salvation. These are the actions of our Lord Jesus Christ. Friends, this is the kingdom of God on display for everyone to take notice of. This is our God, kind, gentle, compassionate, healer, restorer, the one who saves and redeems. You may be thinking, like many do, oh, Brian, that's great for her, but what about me and my condition today? Does God still heal today? Great question. And I would say yes, absolutely. Remember a few weeks ago, I talked about God being immutable, unchanging, and it is because God is unchanging that we can know and trust that if God has healed in the past, then God still heals today. And friends, he does so in a variety of ways. God works through doctors and nurses and medical professionals to heal. God works through medicine and science and technology to heal. God, our creator, made the body an amazing wonder in that it is self-healing. God also heals miraculously and in ways that stump scientists and medical professionals. You may be wondering, what if I've tried it all and I'm still not healed? Doctors and medicine have failed me. I've prayed too. I've asked God over and over to heal me, and yet I'm still sick. My condition remains. Friends, I would encourage you this morning to continue trusting in God. For reasons that I don't pretend to understand, I know that there are times when the healing doesn't happen in the way that we would hope for, but I can assure you, in the end, friends, because of Jesus, because of his death and resurrection and ascension, friends, healing is assured. When my mother was diagnosed with liver cancer in May 1999, she had faith in God to heal her. We, her family, had faith that God would heal her. We prayed, we fasted, we believed, others prayed, others believed. She was anointed with oil and prayed for and yet in September of 1999, she died. And for a few years after she died, I had one outstanding question that I could not let go of. Why? Why her? Why did she die? She believed. She trusted in God. She prayed. We prayed. Why? It's a valid question. And God's okay with your questions of why. You need to know that and have permission to ask God that question. I had wrestled with that question over and over. And I chose to continue to put my hope and trust and faith in God despite my own disappointment, deep disappointment, that she had not been healed. There was such a deep brokenness and a wounding on the inside of me sadness and unrest in my soul and one day during a time of prayer ministry where two pastors who loved jesus and believed in healing for the body as well as the mind and the spirit the soul sat with me and we prayed together they prayed that god would show me where he was during those five months of her sickness and at the time of her death and God showed me over the course of several of those prayer sessions, like over the course of months, 
that he was there the whole time, that he was with her, that he was with me, that she was never alone, that I was never alone, that he heard her prayers, that he heard my prayers and all of them, and yet, and this is what brought healing and peace to my mind and my spirit, God said it was her time to go. These fragile bodies and our time on this earth aren't eternal. We know our bodies don't last forever. They do break down and eventually go back to the earth as God intended. We know from scripture there's an appointed time to be born. There's an appointed time to die. And it was her appointed time to die. When that truth settled into my heart that God was in control, because that's what it translate to, translates to, to know that it was her appointed time to die, God was in control. It brought such healing in me. I was no longer broken over her death, of course sad and missed her and miss her deeply, but I did not feel the sting that I carried for so long over her death. My question had been answered. I was free from all of the ruminating that had occupied my mind for years. A huge relief of angst, and I was no longer stuck in life. I was able to move on. The truth and reality for all of us in Jesus Christ is that he has saved us from sin and death. And while our bodies will die, friends, we will not. We will continue to live with him eternally. And I say continue because we enter into that life here and on this side of glory. And we just continue on with him when our bodies die. Her body wasn't healed on this earth, but she was healed and made whole as she passed from this life into the next and there she will never suffer pain or death or any of the ill effects of sin again. Friends, if God doesn't heal you in the way you've asked, it does not mean that God doesn't love you. It doesn't mean that you are to blame for not having enough faith. That's a lie. There are stories in scripture where Jesus healed people who had no faith of their own. In some cases, others had faith for them. In some cases, it was a sovereign act of God to choose to heal that person. And in some cases, he says, your faith has made you whole. Not only did Jesus heal friends, but he gave his disciples authority in his name to go out into the world and to bring healing to those who are sick. God also worked through them and healed many. And God continues to do that today. In Psalm 103, which we read responsively this morning, the psalmist is praising God. Bless the Lord, O my soul. Forget not all of his benefits. Notice they're God's. That God is the one doing all of these things. God forgives our sins and heals our diseases. God redeems our life from the grave. Friends, he saves us from it. He crowns us with mercy and loving kindness. He satisfies us with good things. God is full of compassion and mercy. God is slow to anger, friends, and of great kindness. He has not dealt with us according to our sins. You are not suffering because of your sin. His mercy is upon us as high as the heavens are above the earth. He removes our sins as far as the east is from the west. My sisters and brothers, when we think of healing, we often think of mending bones and curing diseases. But in our reading from Isaiah today, we see images that expand just a little bit or a lot. Our thinking in terms of healing. Notice that the dry land becomes glad. The desert rejoices and blooms. Fearful hearts are filled with strength and fear no more. Waters break forth in the wilderness, streams in the desert. Friends, this is the healing of our emotions, of our spirits, of our souls. 
And in addition to that, Isaiah also talks about weak hands being strengthened, feeble knees being made firm, the eyes of the blind being opened, the ears of the deaf hearing, and the lame leaping like a deer. This too is a beautiful picture of God's healing and salvation. Friends, God is our healer and God still heals today. And I trust, and I'm joining my faith with you, and so are the other anointers, joining faith with you as you come forward. If that's all the faith that you have is to come forward and to receive that anointing, friends, that is faith enough. It's faith enough. You're coming forward, you're putting yourself there, and we're going to do just as James chapter 5 teaches us. We're going to have you anointed with oil and pray the prayer of faith believing and trusting that God will do what only God can do and heal you and make you whole. Friends, God heals today. God is here with us, and I trust that God is going to heal today. I look forward to hearing stories of how God works in your lives. Thanks be to God. Amen.